Hello dear students, I'm Dr. Gaurav and today I'm going to talk about the ankle joint and the tibiofibular joints. So both these joints are very uh, important from the examination point of view. The ankle joint comes as a short note and about the tibiofibular joints, you know, you are asked in the viva examination, which type of joints are there, where they are present. So I start with the ankle joint. The ankle joint is a synovial joint of hinge variety. You know, when you are describing the type of ankle joint, it's a synovial joint of hinge variety. Now, uh, what do you mean by hinge? You know, just like a uh, hinge can be opened and closed in one particular way only. Similarly, these, these joints, you know, the hinge joints, they allow movement only along one axis. Another example of hinge joint is your elbow joint, which allows only flexion and extension. So this ankle joint also it allows only dorsiflexion and plantar flexion and it is a synovial joint of hinge variety. It allows movement only along one axis. So what are the superior articular uh, surfaces for this ankle joint? The superior or the upper articular surface is formed by lower end of tibia including medial malleolus. So this thickened portion here is forming the part of the upper articular surface. This is the tibia bone and this is the medial malleolus. So we have the articular surface is also formed by the lateral malleolus of fibula. So the superior articular surface, the fibula is also contributing to that. So this bone is the fibula. And then we have the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament. Now what is this ligament? This is a ligament which is bridging the gap between the tibia and fibula posteriorly, you know, behind the talus. So these three components, they are forming the upper articular surface of ankle joint, while the lower articular surface is formed by articular areas on the medial, upper and lateral aspect of talus bone. So, uh, students, you must mention the articular surfaces. So, this diagram you need to practice and make in the examination if you get a note on the ankle joint. So, what is this diagram showing? It is showing the articular surfaces thickened and then it is showing the ligaments. This is the medial ligament of ankle joint called deltoid ligament. This is, these are the components of the lateral ligament of ankle joint. And uh, this is the ligament which is joining the tibia and fibula, very strong ligament, introscious tibiofibular ligament. And these are the ligaments which are joining the terrace to the calcaneum, introscious talocalcaneal ligament and the cervical ligament. So do remember to draw this diagram and practice it thoroughly because if you get a note on ankle joint, you need to make it in the examinations. Now what are the factors which give strength to ankle joint? Now this ankle joint is quite strong. So you see why it is strong because the superior articular surfaces they form a deep socket. Okay, so superior articular surfaces form a deep socket. Another anatomical factor is that the talus is wedge shaped. It is wider anteriorly compared to the posterior aspect and the malleoli are oriented to fit this wedge. Then I have already mentioned inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament which bridges the gap between tibia and fibula posterior to the talus and this ligament student it passes from the upper part of malleolar fossa of fibula to the posterior border of articular surface of tibia and it reaches up to the medial malleolus. So we come to the ligaments of the ankle joint. So we have got the fibrous capsule, just like any other joint, this joint also has got a fibrous capsule. So the ligament on the medial side, this is important, this triangular ligament is called deltoid or medial ligament. Uh, it has got superficial and deep parts. So here in this diagram, we see the superficial part, the deep part is obscured. So the superficial part and the deep part, they, they arise from the apex and margins of medial malleolus. Yes, so the origin is common while the lower attachment is indicated by the names of fibers. We'll see how these are the anterior fibers, middle fibers and posterior fibers. When you see this diagram, you imagine you're looking at the ankle joint from the medial aspect and this is the ankle joint of the right side. So, superficial part, anterior fibers, 
they are passing to the tuberosity of navicular bone and this is which component it is tibio navicular component the middle fibers they are passing to the cystentaculum tali of calcaneum and this is which component tibio calcaneal component and the posterior fibers they are passing to the medial tubercle and adjoining part of medial surface and this is which component posterior tibio talar component so the deep part is also referred to as anterior tibio talar fibers and the fibers pass to the anterior part of medial surface of talus so this is a diagram which is showing in toto the deltoid ligament the superficial part is very well depicted here and this diagram is a representative diagram very useful to draw in the examinations so anterior fibers are getting inserted to the tuberosity of navicular bone middle fibers to the cystentaculum tali of of calcaneum and the posterior fibers they are getting inserted onto the medial tubercle and adjoining part of medial surface of talus so i expect you to practice this diagram and make it in the examination if you get a note on the ankle joint now the lateral ligament of the ankle joint it has also got components so you imagine that you are looking the right ankle from the lateral side so these are the anterior fibers posterior fibers and the inferior fibers so one is the anterior talofibular ligament uh, which arises from the anterior margin of lateral malleolus of fibula and is getting inserted onto the neck of talus other is the posterior talofibular ligament which arises from the lower part of malleolar fossa of fibula and it gets inserted to the lateral tubercle of talus and then is this calcaneo fibular ligament which arises from the lower border of lateral malleolus of fibula and it gets attached to the tubercle on lateral surface of calcaneum so again this is the diagram which is showing you the insertions also a very useful diagram to draw in the examinations anterior talofibular ligament getting attached to neck of talus posterior talofibular ligament getting attached to lateral tubercle of talus and the calcaneo fibular ligament getting attached to tubercle on lateral surface of calcaneum now relations of ankle joint so this is, this is a lower limb you know so relations will be from medial to lateral side so the components of the anterior compartment of the leg you know they are forming the anterior relation so what are the components from medial to lateral side tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus anterior tibial vessels deep peroneal nerve extensor digitorum longus and peroneus tertius so extensor compartment is the anterior compartment so you remember extensor hallucis longus then extensor digitorum longus and there's a mnemonic for this tina has a nice dressing table t stands for tibialis anterior h stands for hallucis so it's extensor hallucis because it's the anterior compartment a stands for artery artery of anterior compartment is anterior tibial vessels nice stands for nerve deep peroneal nerve is the nerve of anterior compartment dressing stands for digitorum extensor digitorum longus and table t stands for peroneus tertius posteriorly the relations from medial to lateral side are muscles of posterior compartment so tibialis posterior which is the deepest muscle then you have got the uh, flexor digitorum longus posterior tibial vessels which which are the uh, art posterior tibial artery is the artery of the posterior compartment tibial nerve is the nerve of the posterior compartment so the mnemonic for for the posterior uh, uh, compartment is tina deserves a nice husband t stands for tibialis posterior d stands for digitorum this is the flexor compartment so flexor digitorum longus a stands for artery posterior tibial artery n stands for tibial nerve so tina deserves a nice husband h stands for flexor hallucis longus and then you have the two muscles of the lateral compartment the peroneus longus and brevis which also lie on the posterior aspect of the ankle joint so movements of ankle joint they are very important from examination point of view now what is dorsiflexion in dorsiflexion the forefoot is raised so here this is the forefoot it is raised so this dotted portion is representing the dorsiflexed movement so what is happening here is that the forefoot is getting raised and the angle between the front of leg and the dorsum of foot is getting decreased compared to the previous position in which the ankle between front of leg and dorsum of foot was 
more. So the main muscle for dorsiflexion is the thick muscle of the anterior compartment that is the tibialis anterior and all the remaining muscles of anterior compartment they are the accessory muscles for dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion. In plantar flexion the forefoot is depressed. Now this dotted portion is representing plantar flexion. So the forefoot is depressed and the ankle angle between front of leg and dorsum of foot here now is increased. So the main muscles for plantar flexion are the muscles of the superficial compartment of the back of leg except the vestigial muscle and they are the gastronemius and soleus. The vestigious muscle, the vestigial muscle plantaris, tibialis posterior, the deepest muscle and the muscles of the intermediate compartment flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus of back of leg. They are the accessory muscles which are responsible for plantar flexion. So main muscle uh, for dorsiflexion was tibialis anterior while the main muscle for plantar flexion is gastronemius and soleus. So again we can make out dotted portion here is representing the uh, dorsiflex movement while here it is representing the plantar flexion. Now blood supply and nerve supply well all the nerves of the different compartments and vessels which are lying in the vicinity of the ankle joint they will supply it anterior tibial artery artery of anterior compartment posterior tibial artery artery of posterior compartment deep peroneal nerve nerve of anterior compartment tibial nerve nerve of posterior compartment and then we have the peroneal arteries which will supply the ankle joint. Now we come to the applied anatomy of ankle joint. Dislocation of ankle joint is very rare because of the ligaments, because of the deep socket which is formed and uh, you know sprain of ankle, what we refer to as sprain of ankle, it is the stretching or tearing of ankle ligaments. So this you should keep in mind. Now tibiofibular joints, well there are three joints between the tibia and fibula. So you have the superior tibiofibular joint, this is the capsule of superior tibiofibular joint, flat rounded facet present on head of fibula articulates with facet on lateral condyle of tibia. So this is the superior tibiofibular joint, it's a synovial joint of plane variety, you should remember this. Middle tibiofibular joint is called introsious membrane. And it extends from the introsious borders of tibia and fibula respectively. So introsious membrane is attached to introsious borders of tibia and fibula. This type of joint is a fibrous joint. The fibers are directed downwards and laterally. So there are two openings in the introsious membrane. The upper opening is for the anterior tibial vessels while the lower opening is for the perforating branch of peroneal artery. Now functions of introsious membrane, well it binds the tibia and fibula together, it gives area for attachment of muscles and it resists downward, downward pull of muscles attached to fibula. You know most of the muscles attached to fibula, they tend to pull it downwards. Biceps femoris is the only exception, this is the muscle which pulls the fibula upwards. So the muscles attached to fibula will pull it down and this introsious membrane, it resists the downward pull of muscles attached to fibula. Inferior tibiofibular joint, well this is very strong and this is a syndesmosis and it unites the lower end of tibia and fibula. So this is a diagram which is showing the tibiofibular articulations and it is showing the apertures in the introsious membrane. So with this I complete my class today. Thank you for your time and consideration. Till the next time we meet, it's a big bye from me. So take care of yourselves and bye bye. Thank you.